So what do I put here? I leave it empty. Call it the empty set. Somebody asked me about this yesterday, and I wanted to make sure that I did an example of this. There's none of these places it might end up in. I think Todd asked me at the end of the day whether it's 2 to the n or 2 to the n minus 1. It can really be 2 to the n because there's none of these places that it might end up in. It won't possibly get into a, b, c, or d, so it's going to go nowhere. Now, from nowhere on a 0 or a 1, you end up nowhere. And that's just what you said. So Chris is right. This empty set is what we normally call a dead state. Good. Well, that's nice. At least we don't have to do any further exploration from here. But we do have to do exploration from here. There's zeros and ones here. On an ACD, if you get a zero, where can you end up? A, D, C, or B. Eight, all of them, right. All right, if you're not sure what's going on here yet, ask yourself the question. If you saw two zeros in a row starting from here, where might you end up in this machine? And the answer is A, B, C, or D, any of those places. To go to A, 0, 0. To go to D, 0, 0. To go to C, 0, 0. To go to B, start here, 0, 0. You could end up in any of those places. So by the way, should we accept 0, 0? It ends up either in A, B, C, or D. Should we accept it? Yes. Why? Because it can end up in A. That's very important to realize. When we're all done making this machine, and we're going to be all done in two more minutes, how are we going to identify what the final states of this deterministic machine are? They are any states that contain one or more final states from the original. In this case, since there's an A, this is going to be a final state. And I'm going to mark it so right now, so you remember. And so is this. Uh, no, I don't think S is. But not in this state. I would have I would have had the star state be A D. You mean have it be the combination? Yeah, you could do that. Um, yeah, this is a technicality about the empty string, whether you want to accept it or not. So if you accept the empty string, we'll add it in here with a double circle. And if you don't, you leave it blank. Otherwise we could have two n plus one states here. That's right. Right. We don't want an extra one. Right. Or you could start with, with AD at the beginning, too. That's another possibility. All right, let's continue. So, but we are accepting the empty string, so I'll, I'll put a circle here. That's fine. Uh, no circle, double circle here, because this has got no A in it. Now we've got to get a 1 out of ABCD. Where do you go with a 1 out of ABCD? All right, ACD first. Come on. Where does it go? No place. Where does this one go? How about this one on a zero? That's easier. It goes to the same place. It goes A, B, C, D. A fast way to do that is if A, C, D went to A, B, C, D, then certainly A, B, C, D is going to go to at least A, B, C, D. And it can't go to any more because it can't get to the dead state or the S state. So you can kind of do that a little more quickly. But what about one? One doesn't go to a dead state here. One goes to some real place. It goes to A combined with D. Good. That's another final state. Well, that, that's what Chris was saying before. We, yes. Everybody who said, it's, isn't that the same as a start state? Yes. But let's just stick with this more mechanical general way, and it'll be OK. It's not going to be wrong. Maybe a little longer than necessary. All right, AD on a 0 goes where? Check it out and tell me. ACD is right. And AD on a 1 goes to the dead state. I think that's it. This is a deterministic machine that accepts all binary strings that in front of every one 
appears at least two consecutive zeros. How does it work? Does it make sense? Can we make sense out of it now that it's here? I mean, here's the answer. Let's interpret it and make sense out of it. Who wants to try? So is ACD like the union of ACD? How should we interpret the commas? All it means is that if you ever end up here, then the string that you read could have ended up in the original machine in either A, C, or D. So it's the union only in that sense. But I don't think you can go any further with that analogy. So what's going on? Right, and everybody noticed that these two states are identical? I think that's true. So we could have just started from here. I think that would have been fine. But that's, that's neither here nor there. How do we interpret this? Let's just go through it. Let's go through some examples. Presumably, before everyone, there's got to be at least, at least two zeros. So what does this represent? We saw one before there were two zeros. You're going to die right there. That makes sense. OK, so you start with a one, no good. You've got to start with a zero. So here's a zero. Fine, we saw one zero. Let's call this state, I just saw a zero. OK? Let's call this state, I just saw two consecutive zeros. I saw a zero. I saw two plus zeros in a row. Why did I say two plus zeros in a row? Because if you get another one, you stay there. So this is the last two symbols I saw were zeros. The last symbol I saw was a zero. If you get here, then you're allowed to have a 1. Otherwise, you're not allowed to have a 1. If you get a 1, OK. If you get a 0 after that, where do you go? Back to the thing that says, I saw a 0. Right? Then if you see a 1, you're dead again. But if you see two zeros or more, you can go back and continue. It isn't so hard once you see it in front of you. And if we had done it from scratch, we probably would have come up with this idea. But right at the beginning, the first one we did seemed a lot easier than this one. Even though they really weren't, one wasn't really more difficult than the other. But this reversal shows it mechanically. And it's nice to have this tool that reversal always stays regular. OK, are there questions about this? Teresa? What does it mean that I saw a zero and I saw two zeros are both except zero? I guess that only is the final except zero. Why are those two intermediate states? Because the only time you don't want to accept is if there's a one that came without the two zeros. So if there aren't any ones, it just doesn't hurt. So any collections of zeros you're going to accept anyway. Okay. Right. So it's a semantic thing. We're not saying that there has to be a 1. They're saying that if there is, then there's going to be zeros in front. So it's OK, and, and we sh really should make these accept states. Same number of states for reversal? In the minimal hmm. Yeah. What, Todd asked the question, what happens when you reverse a machine? What do you think happens? Well, when you reverse it, just the arrows go backwards, you know, and, and we add a start state. You know, so that's just adding one state. That's no big deal. But then we had to convert it to, to a deterministic machine. And here we got lucky that we didn't add too many. But it is conceivable that in this non-deterministic to deterministic conversion, we would have used all the subsets here. And the number of states would have increased from n to 2 to the n. And we might not be able to prune it down. So it's very possible that the reversal of a machine uses a lot more states than the machine itself. But here's something really cool. It's really cool because to this very day, I have never really sat down and figured out why this works. And to this very day, I don't know any paper that refers to this. As far as I know, it's just folklore of theoretical computer science. And here's an interesting fact about reversal. Remember I mentioned many times already that there's a deterministic machine that's minimum. And if you find that minimum one, you know that's say four states big for any set, then they're all identical. Then all those four state machines you know, look the same. There's a unique minimum finite state machine. And I mentioned it's worthwhile to know how to get that, because you might not have it to start with.